Good evening, everyone. Earthquakes and Alaska go hand in hand. We don't know when the next big one will hit, but we know to expect them and we prepare for them. But the tsunami risk, at least to Anchorage, is less understood, but that is changing. New research released just today now explains the risk to Alaska's largest community. This week, Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry is going to show us the potential impacts where the newly understood threats lie in Alaska and how you should respond if a warning is issued. Anchorage is known for its views of the mountains and the water. We know earthquakes are common here and tsunamis are not, but could they be? There are more than 50 Alaskan communities that have detailed tsunami inundation maps. Research and modeling has been done. These communities know the areas at risk of a potential tsunami and are hopefully prepared. But until this week, Anchorage was not on that list. The reason? Myths and misunderstandings. I'm thinking about all these years when people thought that Pakuk Inlet is immune to tsunami hazards. So I couldn't find a single good argument why it's immune to tsunami impacts. NOAA awarded a grant to the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management to do the work. Low tide here. And now this team of scientists has proof Anchorage is not immune to tsunamis. We learned many new things that could happen, you know, just below the sea floor of the Gulf of Alaska. Modeling 16 hypothetical earthquakes revealed several scenarios where a tsunami inundated sections of Anchorage. These earthquakes were all mega thrust quakes focused in the plate interface. The first group of earthquakes is in between Kodiak Island and the Kenai Peninsula. The second group of earthquakes occur southwest of Kodiak Island and energy from those earthquakes travels through Shelikov Strait to get to Upper Cook Inlet. The areas just west and east of here had real life examples of major earthquakes, including the largest earthquake to ever hit the northern hemisphere. In 1964, this quake generated the most destructive tsunami in North America, killing more than 100 people. But why didn't Anchorage see the waves? Turns out it did. So, but it came at 2 a.m. and it came on low tide, but it was pretty substantial. It was about three meters, which is like 10 feet high. And if it happened at high tide during daytime, it would be noticeable. With Anchorage's extreme tidal ranges, timing is everything. What's gonna be crucial when the next big earthquake happens in these parts of the subduction zones is what will the tide in Upper Cook Inlet look like in about four and a half hours. Upper Cook Inlet has the highest tide change in the U.S. with tidal ranges averaging around 30 feet. That means a tsunami can enter with the tide, making the impacts far greater, or against the tide, minimizing how far the water will travel. What about the myth that Cook Inlet is too shallow for a tsunami? The depth only affects the propagation speed, which means that uh, in shallow water, tsunamis propagate slower. It just means that it will reach Anchorage later rather than sooner. This is a map of the expected inundation zones, the areas that could be underwater, assuming a large earthquake happens in the right place at the right time. Most of the inundation we see along the coastlines are where we have water bodies or rivers flowing in. So in Anchorage proper, that's Westchester Lagoon and Ship Creek areas. Um, that's the Eagle River Flats, the mud flats at the head of the arm, Goose Bay across the way. And then down in Turnigan Arm, it's the Potter Marsh area, the mouth of the 20 mile river near Portage. We need to get prepared because if it's not going to happen during our lifetime, it will definitely happen during our children's lifetime or grandchildren's lifetime. And this team of researchers hopes anyone living or visiting here will know the hazard areas. They'll understand the warnings and they'll know when and where to evacuate. From Anchorage, I'm Melissa Fry, Alaska's News Source. You're watching Alaska's News Source. Good evening, everyone. It's a danger many of us thought Anchorage would never have to face. We're talking about the threat of a tsunami. As Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry reported last night, for the very first time, scientists have research showing that there is a tsunami threat to Anchorage and Upper Cook Inlet. That includes the Port of Alaska, areas along Ship Creek, near Westchester Lagoon, and the low-lying areas of Turnigan and Kinnick Arms. 
Well, tonight, Melissa is going to take a closer look at the risk to the Port of Alaska. While most of Anchorage sits up about 100 feet or higher here along the inlet, the elevation is closer to zero. Now, when it comes to tsunami danger, your elevation and your distance from the water determines much of your risk. New research proves for the first time it is possible for a tsunami to reach the Upper Cook Inlet. And thanks to a group of researchers here in Alaska, we also know where the water would go and how long it would take to get there. Sitting inside that inundation zone, about 125 acres, that is the Port of Alaska. Jim Jager, Deputy Director of Resiliency at the port, says he's not concerned about people getting to safety during a tsunami. The scenarios that I've seen, we have hours of warning time, and you can get up the hill and out of the tsunami range in, in hours. The more interesting question is what happens to the physical port? About three quarters of the food and consumer goods consumed statewide crosses this dock. And if shut down, he says you'd notice it right away. The state says somewhere between six and 10 days until we would be more or less out of food. And beyond the docks, there is a lot more here. We have all these yards with all these containers that if you have a, a tsunami come in, they're going to wash somewhere. Potentially creating their own path of destruction. This port is also a main storage facility for fuel and cement. We have 60,000 tons of cement storage here at the port. If that cement gets wet, um, cement and water, not a good combination. And despite knowing there is a risk, there are still a lot of unknowns. It's going to depend on how big the wave is. The event of a um, relatively small wave at low tide may not have a big impact on us. On the other hand, a large wave at high tide could potentially take the port out. Jager says they need to begin preparing now as upgrades are made. That doesn't mean we're going to have a tsunami proof facility, but it will be a lot more resilient. When we're building new structures, new infrastructure, we ought to be considering where the tsunami risks are. And part of knowing the risk is knowing where you need to go to be out of the inundation zone and how much time you have to get there. In Anchorage for Alaska's News Source, I'm Melissa Fry. Now you can see the detailed map showing areas of risk for all of Upper Cook Inlet at alaskasnewsource.com. You're watching Alaska's News Source. Our special series about the newly understood threat for tsunamis here in Anchorage takes a closer look tonight at where these waves come from and what to do when a warning is issued. Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry visited the tsunami the epicenter for tsunami warnings in North America to learn more about how these alerts are issued. The National Tsunami Warning Center, based here in Palmer, is monitoring earthquakes worldwide 24-7. Should there be a tsunami threat to Alaska, they would let us know within minutes. <laughs> Tsunamis are one of the most destructive forces of nature, as seen here in Japan in 2011. The waves are born when the ocean floor below miles of water is violently moved. In the case of a large megathrust earthquake, one tectonic plate is forced under another, and the Earth's surface is lifted, suddenly forcing all of that water to move, creating a series of waves extending from the bottom of the ocean to the top, now moving in all directions until the waves hit land. And in just a matter of minutes, a destructive wave could reach uh, coastal areas of Alaska and all the way down the U.S. West Coast. Here at the National Tsunami Warning Center, they check every quake. The computer sounds the alarm. Sure. Period. Oh, oh. Indicating a possible tsunami-creating event, and the scientist moves in, analyzing each piece of data quickly. Right now, what I see is a magnitude of 3.8. What we want to do is find out, is this a big enough earthquake? Is it one that can move enough water? Is it in deep enough water? And then how much time do we have to tell people to get out of the way? If the quake is in the right place and big enough to create a tsunami, the warning or advisory is issued. But the initial details are limited. 
from the time where the water changes underneath or above the earthquake to the time the water is reaching a dart buoy or a coastal tide sensor could take 60 to 90 minutes. And that's a long period not to know if there's a damaging tsunami coming to your coastline. The more time goes on, the more details they have and the forecast is refined. And that is why you'll almost always see multiple updates following a tsunami alert. But as new tsunami risk areas are defined, like the Upper Cook Inlet, and new technology like cell phones are used, it's possible you may get a warning that isn't for you. Snyder says that is a work in progress. It is a tremendous amount of work to adapt something that is designed for the outer coast and not for things like Cook Inlet, San Francisco Bay, Puget Sound. Those are things that we don't do well today, and we know that. And until those systems are upgraded to avoid any confusion, he says, stay alert, know your risk, and evacuation routes. You should know if you're near the coastline, anywhere in Alaska, know where you need to go in case you get a tsunami alert of any kind. And like any drill or alarm, treat each alert like the real thing, because this time, it may just be. Every time we get up from our chair and we move here to look at the earthquake, we don't know if this is going to be the one. And so we have to treat each one like it is the one until we know better. Okay, there's a tsunami warning. The threat for destructive tsunamis in Alaska is real. Now including also for portions of Anchorage and the Upper Cook Inlet. The time to prepare is now by knowing to drop, cover, and hold on during an earthquake, knowing where the tsunami inundation zones are, and by listening to the alerts issued right here in Palmer. Melissa Fry, Alaska's News Source.